Hello again, everybody. I'm Scott Casper. Welcome to this week's edition of Takedown, your weekly source for what's trending in the world of wrestling. Well, if you want to be a winner, you have to make some waves. After a decade of steady decline, the ISU Athletic Department decided to do just that, hiring four former Hawkeyes to guide the program back from the depths of Division I wrestling. Only time will tell if they can accomplish that feat, but for now, it's created a new sense of excitement at Iowa State. Uh, so before I introduce them, I'm going to start with uh, my associate, my new associate head coach, Mike Zadig, to my left. Uh, two things that I really want to address, uh, and first off is the elephant in the room. Uh, we got three guys that uh, grew up wearing black and gold. That's the elephant in the room, right? And uh, we got three guys that look pretty daggone good in cardinal and gold right now. Uh, and I, I'm, in talking to them, I, I think that they will assure you how much they were on board. And so that's maybe a bit of a little bit of a comment to the Cyclone Nation out there that uh, I could tell you in just our, our meetings and being together the last 24 hours, how excited these guys, and I think you'll see that out of them, are to be at Iowa State. Um, so uh, that's the first thing. And, and the second thing, and uh, we've communicated this as a staff, and I think you'll find that out, and I know there'll be some media questions about this as to whose role is this and what this title is. Uh, this isn't about titles or job titles. This is four guys uh, putting their head down, going to work. And everybody's equally important, and everybody's going to be working with the RTC guys. Everybody's going to be working with the team. Everybody's going to be involved in recruiting, and that's what's going to make us great. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I guess first is uh, I, I really appreciate and want to thank Coach Dresser. Uh, Coach, um, like he said, brought me out of the mountains into the coaching world again. I enjoyed it, and I really thank Virginia Tech for the opportunity there, first and foremost, and, and wish him the best. And then moving forward, thanking um, Pollard and uh, Iowa State University here for the opportunity to come over here with Coach Dresser and continue to build something that relationship I think is important that uh, Coach Dresser's had with me and and then also the staff that uh, we had along with us there. So I'm excited for that. As far as this program, um, obviously we have high goals. And like he said, building those relationships with our athletes first and foremost, getting to know each other, building that trust, and, and moving forward. Um, 57th in the country right now, there's a lot of work to do. And that's what we're here to do. And um, do we know a plan of attack? We know what we know about the sport of wrestling, uh, all four of us. And we're going to implement that the best we can. And results will speak for it. And I'm not making any predictions by any means. But that's the job at hand right now. And we're just up for the adventure and the opportunity to do it here as a cyclone. So that, to me, is uh, probably the most exciting thing in our near future. And, and thanks for having us on board. Really, this hasn't really set in for me yet. So you have to forgive me. but. Um, you know, being born and raised in the state of Iowa, I'm really, really, truly excited to come back and be involved with the state of Iowa and Iowa State. And uh, I got to thank Dresser for bringing me along and Pollard for bringing me along. And, you know, my network in the state of Iowa, you know, I've been here my whole life. So really it's consumed my life, wrestling and uh, looking to expand my coaching career, you know, um, I am very, very excited for the things that we have moving forward and with our relationship between Dresser and Zadik and myself with working together the last two years. Um, we've obviously done some really great things and uh, we look to continue to build those things here as well. Thank you. I'm excited about this opportunity. Um, first thing I'd like to say is I'd like to thank USA Wrestling for the opportunity that they had given me. Um, obviously, this was a, a big mix-up as far as my family's plans and what was going to move forward, and it kind of all happened quick. But I am very excited about the opportunity. Um, you know, to get into, in the past years, you know, I've been thinking about how, where I was going to begin my coaching career, how it was going to start. Um, this was a heck of a way to do it, I guess. Um, but I'm excited to do it here. I'm excited to be in the state of Iowa. Um, I was speaking last night to some, some people and talking about the pride that this state has about the sport of wrestling and how fun it is to be in this state when you are a wrestler, where you're really appreciated um, for the work that you do, for the performance that you do. Um, it's a really exciting state to be a part of. So I am glad to be a part of it. Um, I'm excited about this opportunity. I want to thank you guys. Um, for, I don't know, 
take the chance, I mean, is the right word, but reaching out to me um, and knowing I would be susceptible to, uh, to an idea like this, and I'm really excited about it. Um, to me, I think this is great. Iowa State, heck yeah, let's go do it. So, um, so yeah, I don't have a whole lot um, as far as statement goes, but that I'm just very appreciative um, for you guys. Obviously, I've been great friends with these two for a long time. Dresser and I are starting to, starting to develop a relationship, and I, we feel very comfortable there. And I think there's going to be a lot of really good things uh, moving forward. Since announcing the new hires, the Iowa State Wrestling Program has taken in more than $800,000 in donations in their goal toward building a new regional training center. All right, stay tuned. You're watching Takedown. Thanks to our friends at Casey's General Stores. Casey's famous for pizza. Right now, get a free two liter with the purchase of any large pizza. Casey's, famous for pizza. Yellow Blue wants to show you global energy demands are expanding at an alarming rate. Power grids in the U.S. are aging while coal plants continue to close at record rates. Utility rates are at an all-time high and there's no end in sight. If this concerns you, call Yellow Blue, delivering products and services that are not only green, but cost effective. You can be independent, safe, and secure. We'll show you how at yellowbluetech.com. University of Iowa finished the 2017 campaign with a national champ, five All-Americans, and a fourth-place finish. But with four senior All-Americans no longer in the lineup, the Hawks will have a whole new look in 2018. In this Takedown exclusive, we talked with head coach Tom Brands about the health of his heavyweight and the future faces of Hawkeye wrestling. You know, you don't realize the significance of a guy like Sam Stoll. Sam Stoll is coming along fine, and he's an anchor to our team. He's a leader. Uh, he's a heavyweight that's exciting to watch. He's an he active heavyweight, and uh, he's vital to our future, and he's coming along great. You know, who are the guys looking to take over the, for those veterans? I mean, can can uh, Philip make down? Can he get down to 25? Uh, I think his strongest weight is 133. Uh, um, you know, if you look at how he progressed and how he stepped in for Corey the times he did, I think 133 is his weight class. I don't think it's a matter of necessarily deciding where he's going right now, but right now I would I would say if you're asking the question, he's probably stronger at 133. Uh, we have a, a fellow by the name of Perez Perez at 125. Um, he's coming along nicely. We have a, a fellow by the name of Spencer Lee coming into our program. Uh, everybody knows his story and where he's at with being on the mend, and um, so there's just, I mean, there's a lot of, lot of um, questions to be answered, but they might be, you know, they might be closer to being answered than, than you might think this time of year, which is, which is always a good thing when you have a little bit of certainty in it when you're looking a long ways away from the start of the season. Tom and Terry Brands, Cale Sanderson, Tom Ryan, and Kevin Dresser. There's one thing the top coaches in the country all have in common, and that's a connection to the iconic Dan Gable. We talked with Coach Gable about his legacy and its lasting impact on the sport. What I'm trying to do is make sure that wrestling actually works a little bit together at all levels, and so I'm kind of working at all levels. So I'm actually, I think I'm having a pretty good uh, uh rapport with with kale right now and and with iowa state just hiring kevin dresser um, one of my former guys 
and then all of a sudden they they hire a lot of Hawkeye. <laughs> you know, it's like wow. You know, I'm, I'm I visited Iowa State last week as I was in Ames, and I was doing a um, fraternity speech, and I stopped by the wrestling and left him a little note, but uh, nobody was there at the time, and I was kind of <laughs> mad about it because I want. <laughs> I thought they should be working. Right. Then I found out they had a practice that night in the local community, and they had 42 people. And so I'm saying, well, uh, I was wrong. They <laughs> they are. I am mentoring them because they're doing the things that needs to be done. And Coach Tom Brand, uh, you know, he just, um, you know, he's not going to let up. Uh, he's, you know, he's him and his brother. They're uh, they're obviously um, trying to get that title back and. And like to get several of them. So I'm, I'm not, I'm always mentoring. Cody Brewer just wrapped up his first season as a coach, but the 24 year old is still a long way from stepping off the mat. With the U.S. Open just around the corner, Brewer is getting ready to take on a world champ and a loaded 61 kilo field. We caught up with the Wildcats' new assistant to talk about coaching, training, and chasing the dream. I didn't, uh, I didn't just want to wrestle, uh, just compete. I wanted the challenge of coaching as well to do both. And I think it's hard to do both, but I think that's what makes it more, more deserving when you, when you can coach a national champ and all American or, uh, win a, win a, you know, Olympic or, or world medal yourself doing both. I think that's more accomplishing and, and it looks better, um, just showing how hard I can work and, and what I can do for Matt and, and Andrew and these guys here. I think Matt's been really consistent since I've been here and, and does a really great job with the guys and connects well. And, and we're all all different wrestlers, and I think that's that's good to have in a program. of We've all wrestled different ways, so we all try to implement our, our own ways um, together. And I think that's what makes a team team very good, I think, for the most part, really good. I've been wrestling, wrestling three or four times a week, maybe a little bit more. I do uh, two-a-days on some days, and then lifting on my off days and – and get in good recovery. I think there's no, there's no secret to what I'm doing. I think I'm doing just about probably what everybody else is doing. I just, I'm working harder than, than a lot of people probably. So that's, that's going to be the difference come the U S open, but not much, no, no secret to what I've been doing. It's, it's, it's been working for me for the most part and I feel good and, and ready to compete. Our news continues after the short timeout. You're watching takedown powered by yellow blue led. Wow, 40 years. Time really flies. Don't seem like it's been that long. It seemed like only yesterday that I started out route delivering it to the stores. For over 40 years, we're really proud to keep the same quality ingredients and not change our recipe. Help us celebrate our 40th anniversary by joining into our cookies recipe contest with a chance to win a Traeger Bronson 20 smoker. You can enter it on our Facebook page or cookiesbbq.com. Thanks for 40 years, and we'll see you in another 40 years. Cookies. What's up guys, I want to tell you about a new product that I am extremely excited about. It is the Pure and Clean Sports Skin Defense. It comes in a 16 ounce spray bottle and it comes in a little bitty travel size spray bottles. I have one of these, throw it in my bag, go straight to the gym. A lot of these gyms I train at, whether it be boxing, wrestling, kickboxing, grappling, strength and conditioning, it all has bacteria floating around, they all have viruses floating around, they all have fungus floating around, and the last thing you want is to get a fungus, a virus, get sick, any kind of um, any kind of wounds that are going to turn into any kind of uh, skin infections to take you off of the mat. Every single second that you spend off the mat or out of the gym is one second that you're wasting. So, Pure and Clean Sports came up with a amazing solution to give you the right amount of protection on your skin. You spray it right on your skin. Stay pure. Stay clean. Checking them out. PureandCleanSports.com. All right, welcome back to Takedown. Our coverage continues in Blacksburg, Virginia, home of the Hokies and their new assistant coach, Frank Molinaro. He joins us now. Frank, welcome to the show. How are you? 
I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. Most recently, a volunteer assistant at Penn State, your alma mater, uh, were you even looking for uh, a full-time gig anywhere? I had, was not really searching for anything at the time. Um, my focus was mostly on the U.S. Open and training uh, when I received the offer. Talk about the decision to do this. So um, when I first received the offer, it was uh, very unexpected. At the time, I was not looking for any coaching positions. Um, I don't think that, you know, word was out there that I was looking for a coaching offer. And coach just kind of reached out to me um, just to see if I had any interest. We talked more. And then um, after that, I talked to our coaches at Penn State, let them know what was going on, let them know what I was thinking. and went down there and visited Blacksburg and really just loved it. You know, it felt like a place that we could live. We brought all my kids down there. My wife came down there and she really liked it. So, you know, then from there, we kind of came back to state college. We thought about it, um, talked to the coaches some more and, you know, we went ahead and pulled the trigger on it. Do you, do you have a a plan as to what your, what your duties are going to be recruiting day to day? What will it look like? Yeah, I think that's some of the stuff that we're uh, beginning to figure out now. But I think a big bulk of it, um, at least from the start, will be just getting in the room um, and just leading by example, you know, work ethic, um, putting the guys through some stuff. And just, you know, I think the most amount of progress I'll be able to make immediately and have an immediate impact is in the room. So that's a big concern. Um, As far as recruiting, yeah, I want to be involved in recruiting. I know how important it is to get the right kids and build the right culture. Um, and just, you know, really excited to learn from Coach Freyer and learn from Coach Roby and, and kind of, you know, take all three of our, our minds and put them together and, and see what we can do here. And I think that, you know, there's a lot of energy in the room, a lot of energy on the team. And, uh, you know, I feel confident in the 10 years I had at Penn State that, you know, I've learned a lot of great things, um, a lot of good stuff mentally, physically, training, uh, a lot of good philosophies, attitudes. So that's all the a lot of the chunk of the stuff that I'd like to take over here and try to implement and impart on some of these kids. And, um, you know, just the quickest, quickest way to do that is, is get in your room, get in the room, get your hands on them. And uh, I think that's where we'll start immediately. I want to talk about Coach Sanderson just for a minute. It seems like he preaches fun, but there's got to be more to winning than uh, just having fun, or, or are we underestimating fun? Yeah, I think like I think the biggest part of that is, um, to be honest, personally, is just not focusing on winning at all, really. I think that when you can begin to you know train your mind to be more concerned about your effort um, and value things like success and progress and not wait until you you have the whole pie before you celebrate. You know, that's really the the biggest thing that I could could really take out of it is just celebrating the partial victories, celebrating the progress, uh, celebrating things like effort and fight, and uh, not getting too fixed and too zoomed in on winning. Because uh, when you get too fixed on zoomed in on winning, I think the it really takes away from your effort, and I really think it takes away from the joy, and, and you kind of you know, if you wait to celebrate until you win an NCAA title, you know, when you win that NCAA title, you're going to realize it's not that great anyway. So, you know, celebrate the partial victories. Frank, thank you so very much for the time today. I know you've got other things you need to get done today, but it's an absolute pleasure to be able to talk to you on, on this, uh, the very beginning of your career at Virginia Tech. Thanks and congratulations. No problem. Thank you. Lehigh's head coach, Pat Santuro, joins us live after the break. You're watching Takedown, thanks to Nike Wrestling. The Coke business is, it's all about families, and it's a fun business. We have a lot of great people working for us. Uh, About 26% of our workforce has worked for us over 20 years or longer, and we take a lot of pride in that. We like to think it's the family atmosphere. We treat everybody like family. We like to think we treat everybody like family and uh, just really concerned about their families. And that's what it's all about. The war raged for generations. No amount of bravery and conviction could end the infected, unyielding rage. And with every battle, the evil grew 
changed, evolved. The warriors needed nothing short of a miracle to stop the infection, and a miracle they received. Your body is at war against skin infections and diseases each time you step onto the mat. Protect yourself against the invasion. Defend so, defend what you have built. Scott Casper, Takedown Wrestling. Our coverage of the sport continues today with a very special guest of the Nike Hot Seat. He is that man, that myth, that legend. Pat Santoro joins us. Pat, how are you? I'm doing well, thanks. So this commitment, um, I think, really says a lot of things. It's a commitment to Lehigh and to Pat Santoro from Lehigh. Uh, there was some conversation about you perhaps going to Pitt. Uh, how did that, that conversation even start, and how did Pitt reach out to you? Uh, honestly, I got a, gosh, maybe with gosh, sometime in February, I got a call from their associate AD at the time. And he said, this is just a call of interest. We're just going to be interested and we're going to respect your seeds and we want to contact you after the season is over. And I said, great. And I appreciate it. And that was, it was literally a two minute conversation. And that was <laughs> from there, a lot of rumors started. Um, actually it was kind of interesting to see some of the rumors that were out there and, and how in depth they were but it was literally about a two or three minute conversation i had with their their interim ad at the time was a rumor out there that there was this massive contract written up and uh by pitt can you silence those rumors there was never a contract um it was there was never an offer it was just a, a, a call of interest and after the season they wanted me to come out there for the day and that's all it was. Um, but there was never yeah, – and it's unfair to Pittsburgh, too. I mean, um, Pitt did the right thing. Um, they, they they didn't contact me until after the season was over, and it was very quick. It was one day, you know, going up there and coming back. Uh, but there was never an offer made. There was no big contract. I think there's a big number out there, and I think a lot of people are thinking, oh, it's a great job. And, and it, a little bit of it's unfair to University of Pittsburgh because um, they are doing some – I think they're, they're going to do some big things there, and they, they want to hire a great coach. They want they want to go in the right direction. So it's it's a great place. Um, but uh, some of the rumors out there, you know, like I said, are, probably aren't fair to Pitt. You've seen, i got to believe, an outpouring of support from alumni and current wrestlers, specifically after uh, a very, very uh, a poorly written article uh, written about you that you were on the hot seat. Can you address that? Um, I guess yeah. I guess I woke up the Monday after NCAs, and I got a text message from you know one of our former wrestlers, and he was just like, I can't believe I wrote this. I had no idea because I don't get a paper. And then he he sent me the link, and I read it, and I was like, well, maybe I'm out of a job. I didn't know. You know, you just never know. And then um, within gosh, within 30 minutes, I heard from our athletic director who was out of town. And he's like, that is not true. That's not our sentiment, which was great to hear. And then you know Mike Caruso, who's been a great supporter program, he you know he had me over his house for a few hours that day, and we talked. And then. President Simon reached out, and we had lunch together. It was just a uh, – I heard a, a couple of board of directors reached out to me, board of trustees, I mean, and it was it was pretty amazing, the outpoint. I had no idea because usually you only hear the negative. You get an email here or there <laughs> um, when you get from fans, which is – that's their right. Um, but it was a – it was a, I was amazed, the outpouring uh, from the Lehigh community and Lehigh wrestling. So as you've committed to them, they've also committed some things to you to uh, assist you in your efforts in recruiting – uh, taking care of your athletes and knowing what the landscape looks like out there on various college campuses. Uh, what are some of the things that they've committed to do for you to enhance the experience for your athletes? Uh, you know, it's, it's a lot of small things. You know, there's a lot of things we're just not going to do because we're not a Big Ten, Big 12 institution. But, you know, it's, you know, simple things. We might, it looks like we're going to have a director of ops position. Um, we're doing some things with our, you know, athlete insurance that we couldn't do before. There's, there's going to be, um, a uh, fueling station for our athletes. There's a couple other things, but it, it's a bunch of little things that can make a big difference. I'm a big believer in take care of the little things. 
Pat. We appreciate you taking the time to jump into the Nike hot seat with us today and dispel some rumors and clarify some points. But more than anything from us, congratulations on a job well done. As you continue into your 10th year, I'm looking forward to it. Oh, thanks, Scott. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. All right, special thanks to coaches Santoro, Brands, Brewer, Gable, and all the great guests who joined us on the show. Make sure to check out TakedownWrestle.com for the breaking wrestling news, the complete interviews, articles, and a whole lot more. From our studios in Des Moines, Iowa, I'm Scott Kessler. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.